<laughs> Welcome to this edition of the podcast Super Friends. I am John Gay from Jagging Detroit Podcast. Today we're going to talk about the lessons learned about at Podcast Movement 2023 and specifically what that means as far as video for you and your podcast. We'll go around the room and introduce our star-studded panel as always and we begin north of the border with Matt Cundell. Matt Cundell from the Sound Off Podcast Network. I was at Podcast Movement. And now we move to our three super friends who are not at Podcast Movement, but should not be judged because they are all brilliant minds in and of themselves. Uh, Johnny is next on my screen. Go for it, sir. Howdy. I am Johnny Podcast. I produce podcasts for people everywhere, but currently living in Fort Worth, Texas. Catherine O'Brien. Oh, hello, everybody. My name is Catherine O'Brien. I'm a podcast producer out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My company is Branch Out Programs, and I'm so glad to be here. And David Yaz, last alphabetically. David Yaz producing <clears throat> Wicked Good Podcasts at uh, pod617.com, the Boston Podcast Network. All right. So really, I think Matt and I would agree from being at Podcast Movement recently in Denver that the big takeaway is video. Video is the biggest topic that was being uh, discussed among podcasters. Where is it going? There are conflicting opinions on this, as there are with all things in podcasting. Uh, Matt, I'll hand it to you first. Where do you want to start? Well, I think we should start at, you know, the summary of podcast movement. There really was no disruptor. You know, every year there's some big thing that happens. And it was really quiet this year. I think kind of everybody sort of it rolled out as it expected with no big um, surprises. I, I think the YouTube and video thing was the big takeaway and that you do have to have a, a video strategy for your podcast going forward. And uh, one of your old uh Friends, Jay Nacholas from uh, Coleman Insights, along with Steve Goldstein from Amplify Media, had really the keynote spot early in the morning on the last day that talked about how it's not, it, it's really people and the users of podcasts and the consumers who are driving this. Where did you find your podcast? I found it on YouTube. How do you listen to podcasts? Well, I, I listen to them on YouTube. They have a connection with YouTube that is not RSS related. And inversely, YouTube was at the show and it was Steve McClendon who was on stage and, and said, yes, we are going to attach an RSS feed to YouTube music. And as well, if you have videos, feel free to label your podcast, a, 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 a um, label your podcast as such in YouTube through a playlist and, and go ahead and put it up on YouTube. I, I, I want to throw it out to the other three of you that were not in Denver with us. Where do you sit on the video piece of it, and what questions do you have uh, for the group or even our listeners and viewers at this point? Um, I'm glad you asked that because I was going to jump in and ask a question for Matt anyways. Um, I'm all pro. I'm very pro YouTube. I think every podcaster should have some kind of video component. I've actually been saying it since 2020. Um, so... I find it hilarious that they're just now bringing it up at Podcast Movement 2023. But regardless, Matt, about the RSS feeds specifically, does that mean that downloads and statistics will get integrated into your hosting website? Did they talk about that? And then if you're an audio only podcast who's uploading your RSS, do you still need to manually upload thumbnails? Will they create one for you? Do you just upload one image and they pull that? Did they go into any kind of detail about that? Or was it just, we're doing the RSS feed just to kind of like put people at ease. Yeah. So actually they didn't even say they were going to do the RSS feed in the session that we were at, but what they did do was be on the screen. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> but what they did do was they, they committed to it after the fact. So, so the first question about the artwork, we don't know. We really don't know because it's just, we're, we're still a, a little ways away from that. Um, the first part of your question was what again? It, it was um, once you attach your RSS feed to the YouTube, do those downloads then get pushed over to your or the analytics get pushed over to your hosting site or will that solely live in YouTube? That depends on what your host is and what deal they're going to cut. So right now, Triton okay. actually announced. So if you're using Omni, uh, Triton announced that, yes, we're going to be integrating that those YouTube stats into it. Now, it's not going to be a download necessarily just yet because we're not really sure what that's going to be but Libsyn as well same thing you're going to be allowed to uh, you're going to be able to integrate your YouTube stats into your Libsyn account that's a okay. valid point Matt and I want to follow up on that and I'll come back to you in a second here Johnny but I, I do want to say this was a this we were both in that session at the same time and I sent a text to our our group text that holy crap the RSS feed is going to be YouTube and then Matt was like hey 
just hold, pump the brakes here for a second. <laughs> so I think what the the key question is here is YouTube's metrics are different than the traditional uh, analytics we get from podcasts. We're talking about streams and downloads on podcasts. In YouTube, we're talking <laughs> about views. So, yes, it may pull through your RSS feed and it may give some YouTube information to your podcast host if you're on uh, Libsyn or Omni. But at the same time, we're not talking about apples to apples. Do I have that right, Matt? Yeah, that's exactly right. Just, right. you know, a YouTube, a YouTube view, you're going to be able to see that in Libsyn. You'll be able to see it in Triton. But, you know, in I, I, I guess on YouTube music, if they want to make the change and start to be IAB compliant and, you know, have it so that one minute of listening is going to constitute, you know, a download, uh, it may go in that direction. But we'll just have to wait and see how that how that rolls out. But yeah, I mean, I can expect that Libsyn and, and Triton, when they have integrated metrics, that those are YouTube numbers and these are your IAB certified downloads. You still have to add them together. Johnny, go ahead. Well, I wouldn't add them together because it's like putting apples and oranges together. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to dominate the question asking. Um, I, I um, so I have two podcasts that are have their own following on YouTube. Let's say that I'm recording video for these two podcasts. They're getting their own separate set of production editing. It's its own slate. The audio is getting uploaded. I'm gonna scoot more in the frame. The audio is getting uploaded here, which is one file. The video is going up to YouTube, which is a totally different file. Um, let's say that I attach my RSS feed now to that YouTube channel. How does that work? Do, am I now getting double uploads? Uh, any, any, anyone ask questions like that to them? I think, I think the YouTube music is going to be the one with the RSS feed. Okay, so YouTube music is its own separate entity from YouTube, the platform. Okay, audio only, right? That 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 makes sense then. That to keep those things separate. So I wonder then. Then it would just make sense to just have your RSS feed up on YouTube Music because that's another set of people who are just going to be listening to podcasts and music on YouTube Music, which would be their kind of competitor to Spotify. And then they have YouTube, the video watching platform. And what's an episode of the podcast Super Friends without gaslighting somebody like Catherine, for instance, because <laughs> who's already had one heel turn so far and get ready for the next one because YouTube has said, be sure to say to get your podcast on YouTube. They didn't mm -hmm. say YouTube music. Be uh, sure to get your podcast on YouTube. Mm -hmm. yeah. Catherine is Catherine is uh, smiling and steam. nodding for those of you listening. Piling uh, out of her ears. I just want to wind her up and let her go today. The skepticism is pouring off of me. And I, to Johnny's point, Johnny has been telling us, the super friends, that for, since 2020 to get on, get on board. Uh, I, would like, I would like a little bit of a group therapy session. Is my ir irritation warranted or not? Because when I was a girl, when I, way back in 2015, when I was starting podcasting uh, uh, on Libsyn, YouTube was a destination. Okay, then so you so when you uploaded and published through through Libsyn, you could have a podcast going out as an MP4 static image with your audio onto YouTube. Then that went away. We were assured we were just oh assured that everything was not video. We were we po you just keep going podcasting straightforward. And now we've come full circle back where there's promises of Okay, this is the this is the way you should go. Really, what we should have done is, let's say, four to five years ago, started on YouTube. And Frank, and there are plenty of podcasts that are doing that. They have the audio is the secondary to the video presentation, and it's nothing more than what we're doing right here. It is talking heads. It is this this kind of setup, and they have established their beachfront in YouTube. We could have all been doing that from years ago. So I, I just, I find this a little bit irritating. And the other thing too is I've also been through several podcast movements. Uh, and as you, as we already shared, I, I haven't gone for the past two years. We've already been through several iterations where Facebook was promised to be the thing that was going to save us, that we were promised that, oh, Google Podcasts is going to be the thing. And so color me skeptical when these, you know, I, I am embracing YouTube. That'll be great if we can do the RSS feed, if we can do the video, the MP4s, that's fine too. But I just, just the idea that we're kind of getting promised things, uh, just, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, Catherine, you, you make, go ahead, Dave. I was going to say, Catherine, why not think of it as another podcast app 
that where people can find the shows, right? So in other words, when I launch a podcast for a client, I'm thinking what you guys are probably thinking. Let's make sure it's on Apple Podcasts. Let's make sure it's on Spotify. Let's make sure it's on right. Google Podcast and a host of others. I think we can all agree it should. It, it, it's always good to have it on uh, YouTube one way or another, even if it's just a static image of your logo. If if YouTube can make this seamless and, in fact, just picking up the RSS feed and um, you guys can answer this, I presume that means that our home analytics as it were wherever our podcast is hosted we can pick up the analytics and that will be capture anything that happens on youtube because at present youtube one of music the, what's that yeah okay <laughs> youtube see that's music. The, that's the thing is it, these terms are used interchangeably but i need to go download not. the yes. youtube uh, youtube music app i pay for youtube premium but i'm not going to pay for youtube music if that's a, i don't know like it's it's they're going to have to make that a, a really clear because like especially from our standpoint david like we need to understand that super well to pitch that to our clients because they're going to be yeah. like oh do i need to i need to we need to get one of these you know two thousand dollar cameras cameras and start, right like, get lighting and do all, uh, infographics and layovers and everything you go no 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 it's just your rss feed but it's on youtube music and they go wait youtube though right yeah. fair point and and let me say this yeah. david you, i totally agree with that you're right i have been i have been saying yes it doesn't i don't i am not one of those it's not a podcast without an rss feed type people like i yes if you're if let's let us fish where the fish are i totally believe that but th that attitude plus a time machine of four years ago would be perfect that's what i'm saying Th go ahead I was going to say, Catherine, but to your earlier point, let me put my customer service hat on and say, I understand your frustration. Um, and, and, some, and, <laughs> and my call is very important to you. I, <laughs> yes. I know. Yes. My Hang rant on, is very important to you. Yes. Keep going. D David, let's have some uh, on hold music if we could. So, uh, you know, you, met, you mentioned Facebook, for example, that you're, it's a legitimate complaint because to get to the older set of podcast listeners that are very active on Facebook as their social medium of choice. Facebook was going to incorporate RSS feeds. And then all of a sudden they didn't about face and now they're not, which is mind blowing to me because it's such a missed opportunity with the, you know, 40 to 50 plus crowd of people who are on Facebook that it blows me away. And then all the other things you've mentioned. Yeah, it, it is, but it isn't, it is, but it isn't, it is, but it isn't. It, it's, I understand your skepticism, but I think it's sometimes the fault. <laughs> Okay, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being soothed. Yes, the music is very soothing. Thank you. It, it's, uh, it, it's, it's sort of these third parties who like had these false starts. It's not podcasting's issue in general. As it's so much, Facebook was like, hey, here we're here, but we're not. It's all these other entities that were going to do something and then didn't, and that's why you feel like. I don't know, your cheese has been moved, I guess. Loving counterpoint. <laughs> a lot of a lot of podcasting experts get on board with those those sentiments and Fair. those things. So so that when Matt's word, the gaslighting is present. I, I think that that I would like that to be sort of just out there and acknowledged a little bit. No, it, it, you're fair to come with with uh, skepticism here. Facebook had podcasts. Facebook podcasts went away. My loving counterpoint to you would be YouTube ain't going anywhere. YouTube is the mother of all websites and search engines and all that right now. Yes. So, and what YouTube had said in one of the sessions was, hey, we never set out to be a podcast platform. But then podcasters started putting their content on our platform. So we are now pivoting and adapting to try and serve that group of people that is using YouTube in such a strong way. But and the users we started, yes. to, the users, well, the users started to say that a podcast is audio or video. And this was one of the slides that, that was presented um, by Coleman Insights that, that listen, it's, it's, our, it's our listeners that are, that right. are driving the bus on this. And YouTube is just reflecting that. Yeah. But okay, so then that just puts podcasting in the in the not in the driver's seat. We are then we are responding, and when we when other people saw what was actually happening in podcasting, we were told no, that's not how it's going. Yes, correct. And now we're now we're catching up, which is great. I mean, that's great. We're we're gonna we're gonna catch up. Yeah, I think I mean, positive Facebook, spin. But the I mean the Facebook <laughs> thing, Catherine is. I mean they were never anybody. And any app that does not put out, you know, 
everything worldwide is not serious about it. So even YouTube right now is only in, you know, Canada, USA, Brazil, and a few other of, of the annoying countries in, in Central America and South America. YouTube music, you mean? Back to Johnny's point, right? Uh, no, even even YouTube being able to formulate a podcast and label it as such is not available in every country. Okay, but again, oh, no, wait, it... I'm wrong. no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to pull that one back. I'm wrong. So you can you can do it, but in your home country, you can't receive it as a podcast. Okay. So you, you, yeah. If you're in Brazil, you can go ahead and make a podcast and everybody in, in the USA can consume it as such. But in um, maybe in that home country, I use Brazil, which is a bad example. But in some in a country where they don't have it, you, you wouldn't be able to access it. But if you had just been doing video, that would have been available in your home country. No problem. And the consumer who doesn't care about the RSS feed would be receiving your podcast. My two visuals right now are Catherine making the heel turn as she runs out to the ring, but then also Matt <laughs> as uh, Will Hunting with the blackboard and Good Will Hunting with all the all the equations trying to figure it out. What's you YouTube? What's YouTube? <laughs> this is a to me. I can do this in my sleep. <laughs> How do you like them apples? How do you like them apples? I was just gonna say that. David, okay. what's your what's your impression of all this as as we're sort of going into the weeds here? Well, I mean. I'm on board with the video just because of the reasons we've probably discussed before on this pod ad nauseum that YouTube is such a powerful search engine and why not? I think all of there's a part of all of us, and maybe not Johnny, but most of us that would <laughs> that would lament if the very spirit of podcasts turned into a visual animal rather than an audio animal because a, a part of the art of creating a great podcast is that it's done in audio and it's it's done in a way that it has kind of been the great leveler when it comes to content. You know, it, it, it is a simple medium. It's, it's not simple to create great podcasts. You need people like us to help you sometimes. But um, you know, microphone and laptop to get started. I mean, that's great. So I think it, it, it remains to be hashed out whether people will sink a lot of resources into the video product that will be their podcast. And to new podcasters and sort of first year podcasters, if you will, I think my advice would be don't focus on it. Maybe you got, I mean, because it, it is daunting to put together a great podcast, to line up guests, to come up to, to find the time to edit it, post it, promote it. And now you're telling me I got to do it on video as well. And what does that mean? And um, so now I do a ton of video editing. And I love doing it. And I know you do too, Johnny. And, but, but I don't know if anyone shares that possible lament. Well, let me let me meet you halfway because I totally understand where you're coming from. And I know a ton of podcasters feel exactly the same way. I've been recording my podcasts from my closet. All of my coats provide an amazing acoustic treatment. Yep. Why do I I cannot like the audio only version on YouTube is I would say is like the baby step to getting your video strategy moving. You don't need to get like if you think of we all listen to different podcasts, but like the one that comes to my mind, if you guys, do you guys know the comedian Tom Segura? Sure. Yes. No. Yeah. So he's got a huge YouTube presence. It's called your mom's house is the name of his podcast. <laughs> they have a full production team. They have a production director. They have a guy running the audio. They have a guy running overlay. They have a team of five people sitting behind a glass wall while these two comedians bring on other guests and chat amazing cameras, lighting set, and I think that what scares a lot of podcasters is they look at shows like that and they hear the word YouTube and they hear the words, you have to now do this. You guys don't have to do that. That's is totally fine. Your iPhone, my iPhone is my webcam right now. We could take this stream or you could go on Riverside or you can go on Zencaster or even Zoom and you can get a video podcast. If you have a decent camera, again, most of us have one in our pocket right now with the iPhone. You just use it as a wireless webcam of fine background. This is fine. This isn't this isn't crazy production level that we're talking here. Um, the editing side of it, you don't need to remove every single um and uh from your video aspect. So that cuts down on the on the editing time. And a lot of these platforms will just kind of compile the episode together for you. You might have to go in and pull out the time, you know, the five minutes that you went to the bathroom. That's fine. <laughs> it's a little bit of extra work, yes. But in reality, this is something that you can implement into your podcasting sort of step-by-step uh, -step process pretty simply and pretty easily. But David said something, that I'll wrap up on this. David said something that's really critical. Podcasting is an audio medium. 
Yes. That is the exact same thing for YouTube. You could have the most beautiful video in the world. And I've said this on the show before. If your audio sucks, no one cares. No one's ever going to watch. No one's ever going to subscribe. So as long as your audio is still at the forefront of having a great sounding podcast, you're golden. You can, think, you can dial it back on the video stuff if you don't have the budget for it. It's okay. I think Johnny makes a great point that it is not hard to get video on YouTube, particularly with what we have in our pocket, and we'll include Androids for Catherine's sake here as well. But I think... <laughs> um, I avoided saying that. <laughs> um, but, but the other piece of it, too, is... The audio is the walk, the video is the run, in my opinion. And I know all five of us are going to have different, uh, slightly different opinions here. And the idea of you have to be on YouTube doesn't necessarily mean you have to shoot video. Some folks are camera shy. I've been told for years I had a face for radio. That's why I worked in radio and not TV back in the day. So I believe that you can not only just put your audio on YouTube with a service like Headliner as an audiogram, if the point is to be on YouTube and have a presence there because Google owns YouTube. And how often do you Google something and get YouTube search results? You want to have a presence on the world's largest search network. And if you want to take a baby step, a different baby step, could be, you know, two roads diverging here with Johnny, but a different baby step when it comes to the video piece of it is YouTube shorts are massive. Matt, I'm not sure you have Jay and uh, Jay and Steve slide on, on YouTube shorts in that deck, but YouTube shorts are absolutely massive right now. YouTube short is a YouTube video that is 60 seconds or less being consumed like crazy because we all have attention of goldfish. You can simply take your phone and, uh, and, to talk into your phone and say after you've already produced the full audio podcast and say hey guys we did a great podcast about uh you about video strategy today on the podcast super friends we talked about x y and z would love for you to check it out boom put it up it doesn't have to be fancily produced it doesn't have to have any fancy bells or whistles it's a 60 or second or less video that you now have a presence there on youtube to say hey check out the podcast because unlike we heard at podcast movement last year Folks will now change between apps. They will go from YouTube to Apple and Spotify, or they will go from YouTube, uh, from YouTube Shorts or from TikTok or Instagram Reels. If there's a show that sounds good to them, they know how to get it on either Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or some combination thereof to the slide that Matt has up right now. Oh, and if you look at the slide, you can clearly see that um, Coleman Insights and Amplify are gaslighting us by putting the YouTube up there, but also putting YouTube Music in there as a, <laughs> as a separate app. And the slide for those of you listening to the podcast, 73% of podcast consumers prefer some combination of YouTube, Apple, and or Spotify. Um, and all Jack, three of them are all three of them are claiming to be number one in some capacity. Jack, I'll just touch on what you said about shorts. So um, I agree with you on shorts. That's something that I'm, I'm actually going to spend the next three months pushing shorts only on one of the podcasts that I work on. But that is with the addition of a full video podcast that goes to it. So ultimately, okay. the goal of shorts is to drive people to the YouTube channel to consume the full long form video podcast. So I agree. Uh, it, it's I agree. It's a strategy to do to get them to go to the RSS feed potentially. But uh, it would just be one extra step to do. And if you're already filming the video podcast, just take that. You can use that and chop that up into shorts as well. Absolutely. It's a, it's a tool built into YouTube to just clip a short out of your existing video if you do have the video. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's a really great strategy. And you, make, you mentioned the three months thing. One of the things we heard at Podcast Movement in so much of podcasting is trial and error in so many ways. If you're going to try something, commit to it. Try it for three months. See where it goes. And then you can have some real data to make a decision off of. Well, everyone's being, everyone's being so polite. That's nice. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to chime in. Get mean. That, well, you know, people say YouTube, you know, number one for this, that, and, and I think a lot of listeners find stuff there. I'm not sure they spend a lot of time listening there. I think when they talk, well, YouTube is number one for discovery. Yes. I think definitely discovery. But the difference between I'm going to listen to a podcast, it could be Apple, Spotify, or anything else. But I think YouTube is a is a gateway to so much. So when I look it at it, is YouTube, the marijuana of podcasts. Yeah. Well, when I look at, at a, a video strategy, be on YouTube so you can be discovered mm. and people will find their way over to an audio app. 
to Johnny's point earlier, audio versus video, and, and Catherine and David chimed in on this as well. And more, I think David hit on this pretty hard too. I was at one panel at podcast we went where they talked about video able to go in so many places that audio can't because if you have video, you can be you know installed in a Samsung TV as one of the apps that comes with your you know TV off the shelf, all these div- different devices. I say the opposite is also true. Audio goes where video can't. You should not watch a YouTube video while you're driving or you're walking your dog. And a number of you consume podcasts on YouTube and just don't even look at it. They just listen to it. So there is, I think at its core, podcasting is still an audio medium and there is still audio to be consumed. The theater of the mind, paint the picture, all those sorts of things. Audio physiologically engages more of your brain than video because your brain has to paint the picture when you're listening to something that doesn't have a picture. So audio, I think, is still the 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 je ne sais quoi of podcasting that said there needs to be some sort of video component as well thoughts questions concerns so i have a question for david who's using a dory for a lot of these things which has a lot of youtube integration does any of this change the way you are going to approach your work with clients that's a good question. Uh, so yeah, the thank you for shout out for my uh, my partner company Adori. But the, the what Adori has that some other platforms, uh, some other apps may not have. Sorry, hosting sites may not have, is the ability with one click to create to add the podcast to a YouTube channel. And so for a lot of my clients, I just do this. What results is a version of the podcast on a YouTube channel that is just a static image of the the logo of the pod and so voila you're on youtube and i know many of us do that now anyways just with one extra step and so what what adori's been doing for years and it just i I think it likely hasn't caught on with the with the speed and and acceptance that maybe adori would have hoped is it's it generates um images to go along with the podcast, which then becomes a sort of a slideshow. And it uses artificial intelligence actually to go through the transcript of the podcast. And so if you mention a grilled cheese sandwich on your pod, there's a good chance that this Adori um, site will generate an image of a grilled cheese sandwich. Now, I mean, the AI, question, baby. Yeah. And so and so now, yeah, Adori has been doing this for, you know, five years now. And so now we're seeing a lot of AI apps that do exactly the same thing. So, so um, I, I, it's, it's nice to have, I think, and it's, and it's good and it allows, it does, I'll say this, it allows podcast hosts to do things that you can't do audio only. In other words, you can draw attention to an, an image. You can actually have a poll on, it's like we have a poll on the screen right now. You know, what do you think of video podcast versus audio vote right now? You can, be interviewing an author and say if you if you're watching the if you if you're watching this on video right now you see image of the book and you can click on that book right now to buy it so the possibilities are, are endless and it's uh it's it's cool i so it, it's just i think there's still a lot of shaking out to be had here because i don't maybe there's just a line drawn in the sand one day when every podcast we do we call it either audio video or both <laughs> because otherwise I'm afraid it could get confusing because it, that the person who's walking the dog jag or driving in the car, we want to take care of that person, but are we going to have to be constantly apologizing for that person not being able to click on something, you know? Can I add something too to the audio only aspect of this? Please. I think what troubles some people and is probably troubling some of us here is I really like my podcast artwork but I don't know if my listener would want to stare at that for an hour or see it, you know, like it's, it's, Mm -hmm. that could be something. There are so many great options out there, like AI art. You can find people on Upwork, Fiverr, graphic designers on the cheap to create episode specific artworks for your audio only uh, deal. And it doesn't, and I'm not talking about like putting the text episode number 35 with guest Chris Jones on there. Um, (laughs) Can I share my screen so I can show an example of what I'm talking about? Oh my God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I we don't apo- know. How this- we, ap- we apologize right now to the audio only listeners. The irony of our, <laughs> <laughs> our, our discussion here. What is this? Okay. So, this is interesting to look at, right? 
we've got static image of the of that goes throughout the show these are the hosts created as ai artwork and are they, are they happy with those sorry go ahead. The, the, no this is like <laughs> this is what they wanted and so like this is actually interesting to look at and then the combination of actually good content that goes with it you can nix the video portion all together if you genuinely feel like you're camera shy or you don't want to shell out the money to get camera equipment or hire a video editor you can utilize some of these graphic designing tools especially I, I would I, I would assume this is AI art I don't think someone drew this for this individual episode but you can utilize those kind of tools to create something that's actually visually appealing to go along with your sonically appealing podcast there you go Catherine do you like your I was gonna say yeah <clears throat> I like I like that image a lot because you are giving a little extra depth or whatever what have you but also recognize that for a lot of the content on YouTube it was literally a black screen with a just a small icon of somebody's their avatar so Again, it seems like we're out of step with how people are actually using YouTube. There are plenty of people, Jag, you mentioned this, who just listen to YouTube in the background. They're not staring at anything. They're still experiencing it. They're, don't get caught up in the video part of it. It's, you know, it's still your audio presentation. Uh, it just, it makes me feel like people don't realize how people are using YouTube. And again, just kind of wrong footing us a little bit. So, so for Sound Off Podcast, I just put up a, a still image and a, and a bouncy line, and I'm very happy with that. Yeah, that okay? exactly. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? That's that's people are still getting your podcast that way. There's 10, 10 people. <laughs> okay, ten, well, that's 10 people you didn't have, you did, that weren't finding you somewhere else. Or who went to Spotify or Apple to listen. True. It, it's, it comes down to fish where the fish are. I, I want to pivot here because we've got a great question from a viewer, uh, Russell Lauer, who asks us, seems like there's a new AI video tool every day. Any tools you are loving? Let me go around the room. I'll start with Johnny. I'm not familiar with any AI tools that I would implement, Russ, into my daily stack in terms of production. Right now, what my opinion on that is, is that it's getting there. It will be there in probably a year, maybe six months. But right now, in terms of what I assume he's asking about in terms of AI video tool is taking your video and cutting it up into clips. Right now, the AI just isn't smart enough yet to find what's truly good about your content. So right now, I'm still using human eyes and my own judgment by knowing the content because I'm working on it every single day of saying, this is the parts that I need to turn into shorts. If you could use an AI tool to drop that into an AI deal where it creates images to go along with that clip after it understands the context of it, maybe, but it's just not there yet. I think AI tools that we all use uh, religiously is probably Descript. Yeah, I was gonna, let, me, let me broaden it out for that way. Uh, it, and, and I'll come back to, I'll come to David and Catherine in just a second. Johnny, what AI tools, you mentioned Descript, what AI tools do you use overall in your workflow? I use chat GPT to help with social content creation. So what I've done with chat GPT is I have input a lot of, so right now I control one of my hosts, Twitter accounts mm -hmm. and I'm tweeting out all of the marketing for their show. What I do is I took all of their writing from online and I put that into chat GPT four, which is a paid version because it allows you to add in plugins that allow it to scrape the internet and actually look at links and read things and understand them versus chat GPT three, where it's, you have to manually put in all of that text. And I created a bunch of rules. So there's three different tweets that we're putting together. There's an episode teaser, there's an episode release, and then there's quote graphics that we tweet out. All of those need cons, all of those need copy to go with them. And I basically created an AI version of this host uh, to spit out copy in their terms. And again, I'm not I'm, I'm still not taking that and copy and pasting it into Twitter. I'm still tweaking it because I know mm -hmm. the content better and what people want to see. I'm using it more of a launch point. So from a purely AI standpoint, I'm using ChatGPT. I think that's a fair point for most uh, AI is I think a lot of it is really good and can be a useful tool and time saver, but anything you do with AI has to be proofed by a human, whether it's text or audio or anything like that. Catherine, any tools that you're using? Uh, this is not answering the question because it's not a video tool, but as I've mentioned before, I love the headline studio from CoSchedule because uh, titles were a sort of a source point for me. And as I just discovered, they now are doing headlines AI generated or AI proofing for SEO and just a headline score, but they're customizing them for YouTube, podcast, TikTok, Instagram, 
So if you're doing these types of things with the, the shorts or the reels or uh, t TikTok content, that they're tr trying to help you customize the headline for each of those different mediums. Which is great. Dave, what's, what uh, AI are you you're using? Yeah, the, the question was, I know specifically about video. The, the only tool I've really played around with is Opus.pro. Uh, it's called, I guess it's called Opus Clip, but you can take a video clip of really any length, put it in there, and the tool will generate like short uh, clips and it'll write the clickbait friendly headline for you um, and generate like a, a ton of them. You put in a 30, 30 minute video, it'll come up with a dozen different clips for you. The um, So I just with I recommend it with a little bit of caution because I found that you still have to really look at each one carefully to make sure that it got it right. Proof it. So yeah. Yeah, so that, so that's what it, it like. Um, a lot of you have said that this is coming, but it's not quite like ready to go. Amazing time saver, Descript, which has already been mentioned. Um, I I use a lot. It's it's a tremendous app for it's. You can use it for recording, for transcription, for editing, and I also use the voice generator uh, function on that, which has a host of different voiceover robots you can use. I mean, I needed a segment. Uh, just an opening for a segment for a podcast I do with a lawyer named Evan Shine. And this is what I came up with. Ask Evan. Ask Evan. Ask Evan. So the segment's called Ask Evan. People write in and ask Evan questions. And so you heard three <laughs> voices saying Ask oh, Evan. Okay. And then at the end, you hear this. Another edition of Ask Evan. If you want to submit a question for Evan to answer on the podcast, email producer Dave at david at pod617.com. So it sounds a little robotic, but you can play around with it. There's one mm -hmm. voice that, that there's one voice on there that sounds like the voice from God that did every movie in a, trailer in, in the a world. In, in the 80s. Yeah. Yes, in a world where, yes, it, he sounds just like that. So those are those are fun to play around with. Then there, those are those are time savers. You know, if you, you know, we, we voice over a lot of things, but sometimes we like a, a different voice to mix things up. So that's what I got. Matt, vo uh, AI tools using video or otherwise? I would just like to recommend mattcundlevoiceovers.com for any of your voiceovers. <laughs> um, the dulcet yeah, tones. So, uh, yeah, so I, I use something here called... that old woman's voice? <laughs> Do-it-yourself human intelligence is what I use for my video clips. Um, and listen, this is not a knock on the tools that are out there. But the thing is with most of these tools is that it is happy to go through and strip four or five clips for you and give it to you. And then you feel really good posting it and putting it out there. And wow, I got these four or five clips. Your show isn't good enough for four or five clips. <laughs> like your show is not good enough for four or five clips. Spoken you like are a lucky. program director. Yeah. You're <laughs> lucky if you get one clip. And you should go and get that one clip using what I call down below, do it yourself, human intelligence. I poured it into Catherine, but we can go around Catherine. That's human intelligence. That's good. We'll uh, go down below. Right. It's both good. They're both good. Call Catherine. She'll tell you what yeah, clip you need. That's right. right. And listen, not a knock on this stuff, but Johnny said it. The AI is, is not strong enough to determine what the best part is. You know your show. Go get one clip. These people who go off and outsource you know, to get, give me four and five clips. Sorry, your show's not good enough for that. There are professionals out there who cannot come up with four or five good clips on, on morning radio. So you have no chance. One, I have, cli one clip, make it work, go get it. I have a post-it note, st uh, uh, post note stack of empty post-it notes on my desk or pad or whatever you call it. And when I'm editing a podcast, I write down a timestamp as I'm editing. I'm saying, that's the, that's the one clip. Or then if something better comes along, I cross that out and write another timestamp down. I use a lot of AI tools um, to enhance audio. I've used both Descript and Adobe's podcast tool, Adobe Enhance. Um, again, they're great. They're great for problematic audio, but occasionally we'll drop an S. Or they'll add an S, but they'll make somebody sound lith lithby. Or they will make somebody, uh, it, a lot of times when somebody laughs, they take a big inhale after they laugh. <laughs> and it, it will butcher and murder that inhale after they laugh. So again, you've got to proof everything. 
A tool that I like that also is decipher.ai. It's spelled D-E-C-I-P-H-R.ai. It's a transcription tool and also generates clips for social. You can uh, you can and write show notes as well. I've played with that a little bit and had some success with decipher.ai when it comes to writing show notes uh, and, and getting through transcripts. You know, um, Matt pulls up an interesting stat here again, and this was, uh, for my money, the best presentation that I saw at Podcast Movement, and that was the new rules for podcasting done by uh, Jay Nacos and Steve Goldstein. What he has up here is the percentage of respondents that define a podcast as audio only or available with video. And that's 75% of all consumers. If you prefer YouTube, that number goes up to 89. If you prefer Spotify, it's still 70. If you prefer Apple, it's 67. So pretty close, but again, a little bit lower for the traditional audio consumers. I think we saw in the survey that if you are a newer podcast consumer, your definition of a podcast may be broader than somebody who's been listening for five, 10 years plus. Yeah, the newer the app, the more the lean towards YouTube being more accepted as a the newer the, the newer the listener, you mean? Yeah, correct. Or app. Yeah. Um, so I had, a, I had a question for Catherine. Oh, yes. Um, when it comes to a client like you have, you've got a very visual client in Red Stick. Mm-hmm. Do you, how do you look at video now with that client? been telling her just to catch up the yeah just to to catch up the audience so one of my clients is the smidgen podcast which is the podcast of red stick spice company redstickspice.com uh great southern flavors it's a cooking this is a cooking podcast for the home cook and we have we have done video she's got an amazing photography team that does incredible pictures so we have access to all of those things what we do on the podcast is we talk about t techniques and strategies for increasing your home cooking, increasing your home cooking knowledge. And so, yeah, the, the, all of the, the visuals and the pho photography go great with what she's talking about. Um, they have success with the, all of their social media with clips and all, you know, with reels and with shorts and whatever they've, there's one or I don't know if they're on TikTok yet, but also with Pinterest for people looking for mealtime ideas. So, yeah, I think that those are great things. But the, those things support the discussion that Ann Milnick host is talking about the home cooking techniques. So it's it really is. We try to put the, the discussion forward with the podcast. And in that instance, the images are to support and sort of supplement. The great yes. point there goes goes to the uh, knowing your specific audience and where they are. I'm glad Matt asked you about that, Catherine, because you know where people are on Pinterest getting recipes is one of the biggest uses for Pinterest. So here right. you are talking about all these spices. Of course, you should be on Pinterest. Think about what social media your audience uses and be there and whatever platform that is. If you may or may not be on TikTok, may or not be on Instagram, Facebook, etc., have a presence where your audience is going to be. I think, and let me just say this, this points to, I would say, again, a bigger issue, which is you you do have to know who's listening to your show. You have to know what waters they're swimming in so that you can fish them and give you, there is a little bit of, you got to do all the things. You got to do all the things that, that they, those people that you want to connect with that the, the things that they want. So if they are on Pinterest, then you got to learn about podcasts for Pinterest. If they're on Instagram, then you have to learn ab about that. It, getting people to listen to a podcast is not easy. It is a it's, it is a niche product for a niche audience. And that can be a really good thing. But it just requires a lot of extra strategy to kind of go along with it. That's, that's something I always remind myself of. So when I was on the plane going, I had to go Denver to Halifax. It was a long day. And I did think about this. And I thought the video strategy could just be pictures because you've already got the pictures on Pinterest and just say, you know, just send people to Pinterest as much. They'll figure out that it's a podcast because the podcast is playing. But it's a great way just to see the pictures and keep it visual rather than bringing a camera into the studio and, and trying to, you know, recreate some sort of, Cooking you know, moment, Gassier, yeah, Bobby yeah. Flay experience. Just you can just somehow do the pictures, and some somebody already mentioned a, a tool that takes pictures and marries it to 
some video. Yeah, David was saying. Not, David mm-hmm. the door, yeah. David. Yeah, and even Headliner has that option, so that's totally possible. Yeah, I'd be more excited with for the pictures than I would to see a, a video. I, I don't know why. It's, maybe it's because I'm, I'm following you on Pinterest now. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any other thoughts on video before we start to get to our closing thoughts or questions, comments, concerns, or answers? Oh, I just feel like, where do we go from here? <laughs> you know, I mean, VR I, podcasts. I think, oh boy. Yeah. I, I think that I think every, and I spoke to a new client today and I, and he's older and he's like, I said, well, you, we should incorporate a video strategy of some sort. And they were like, no, I don't want to really put the conversation up. It's not who I am. We're just going to go with at the headliner and the audiogram and putting it up. And I think that's fine. For I, some clients, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know that there's, I can go and say, this is the recommended strategy that we need to do every time. I think we just need to think, what is the strategy going to be and just have something. And you know what? If it's nothing, that is still something. I say go for video and make 2018 the best year for your podcast. (laughs) The snark is real today with Catherine. (laughs) I I, I think that's probably a good place to leave it. Dave, you going to jump in? Yeah, just uh, super quick. It, It just... Before you go full on video, if you're like, yeah, why not do video? There's just things to, to think about. A lot of us, certainly d- during the pandemic and even before and after, do a lot of interviews by um, r- remotely. So whether you're using Zoom or, uh, or StreamYard or anything else, um, you know, when you invite a guest on, that guest is going to have to know that you're going to use the video and yeah so some guests might not be crazy about that right and if a guest says oh you know what my camera's down and my place is a mess i'd rather not well if you've committed to this video strategy of doing video what are you going to do then so it, it's just something to think of. on the other hand you, there's a lot you can do with a green screen i'm a big believer in them i'm using one right <laughs> right now right now <laughs> and and, and, and it, it does kick your show up a notch but i mean i'd like to think that we're still not aiming for the quality of like a broadcast television show because again i think that's against the spirit of podcasting because podcasting is focus on the 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 true substance of the content which is going to come in the words that you hear really and not the razzle dazzle so um those are my thoughts on that i agree david i think it really is an issue of you know, get the content right. You could have all the bells and whistles and fancy graphics flying all over the screen. If the content's not there, your audience is not going to be there either. Absolutely. Um, I totally agree with what everyone said. Uh, for the listener or the viewer, just if you don't if you don't take anything else away from today's conversation, take this away. Yes, video is important. There are a lot of ways to get your podcast on YouTube without putting a camera on yourself. Yes. Right, if you do want to put a camera on yourself, it doesn't have to be a $10,000 camera. It can be your iPhone. Podcasting is scrappy, like David said, and mm-hmm. you can keep it that way if you want. If your show blows up on YouTube, then maybe consider investing into the bells and whistles that you need to create a really great broadcast production. But audio will always trump video. You can use static images. You don't have to use your podcast cover art. There's a lot of resources out there. Find what fits best for your show and for your personality and what keeps you the most comfortable so you can continue enjoying doing your show so it doesn't kill your love for doing podcasting because you feel like you have to do video. And as far as AI goes, we're not there yet, but there, that is coming, but we're not there today. I think it's a great way to wrap it up. We'll go around the room and have everybody give their plug. Matt Cundell? Uh, my name is Matt Cundell from the uh, Sound Off Media Company in Canada. This is my hey. best friend uh, at Good shot. Good shot. <laughs> this was the uh, uh, podcast Super Friends, and um, we drank for, for everyone here. And um, <laughs> I think somebody we spoke to, by the way, at this got COVID, but thankfully, neither one of us did. <laughs> thankfully, so, yes. <laughs> sh- shout out to Jeff Does Vegas, Jeff Does Vegas podcast. Johnny. Follow me on the Twitter <laughs> at Johnny Podcasts. <laughs> Twitter forever. <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are we can we even say Twitter anymore? I, we might get blocked by Elon if we say Twitter. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. I'm hello, Catherine O on Twitter slash X. And uh, it's been I have been just so thankful to share my rant with all of my friends today. We're thrilled to have you, David. 
It's pod617.com is my outfit, the Boston Podcast Network, or uh, email me at david at pod617.com. And I am John Gay from Jag in Detroit Podcast. You can find me at jagindetroit.com or on social at jag, J-A-G, in Detroit. Thank you all for joining us visually or audioly today, <laughs> and we'll talk to you next time. Oh, boy.